Hi everyone, uh, in this video I want to show you my code to uh, simulate and study the MOSFET device on MATLAB. So, uh, you know MOSFET is very, it is very important in the study of semiconductors and electronics. I mean it is a basic device which is still now the most used device in, in any electronics uh, design and uh, digital or even analog. So the MOSFET is very important in, uh, to a lot of students and, and uh, a lot of research. So I, uh, I managed to get a lot of, of, of uh, different parts from the study of MOSFETs and I put them all in one code. Because I uh, actually made a lot of work on MOSFET but it was always uh, small bits of study or for a certain uh, uh, aspect of a certain uh, uh, fields that we want to uh, research on uh, when it comes to MOSFET because you see MOSFET has a lot of stuff to to study to investigate and to see the effect of different parameters on so MATLAB is very useful in this so I thought that uh, it would be very helpful to put all these studies together in one code to uh, see the effect of parameters on, on many different aspects of the MOSFET itself so at first you set uh, the parameters okay you set a lot of the parameters for the for the device i i made sure to comment everything here and and in, in the in the study in the following code lines to make it clear and i also uh, ex expressed here the, the, the units used because it's very uh, important sometimes you get a very weird uh, uh, simulation results that because you didn't make sure you use uh, the correct uh, units okay uh, and then what I do is that I vary different parameters I uh, vary the length of the channel uh, the, the, the gate voltage okay and so on and you can set the other terminals the, the set the, you can set the voltage for other terminals uh, in the parameters okay and w once you finish this and you set all the parameters you can run the code and see how this device with these parameters would behave under different applied voltages and actually under different uh, scaling uh, uh, technologies because you can set the same uh, parameters and when you scale down the device it changes the behavior which is known as the short channel effect so I thought that would be very useful for many of you to, to see this all in one code so let's let's run the code and see the result okay so i i made my device and i put the the parameters in and you will find all in the code and here is the uh, studies uh, you see now you see that the, the these values that i vary here like the the v gate and the, the psi s and channel length you can see that there are loop calculations where you uh, discretize your space and then uh, calculate values at each point and, and successive point and so on until you cover the whole range you set in the code to, to see the behavior uh, exactly of the device in this uh, part okay which I see very very useful okay so let's uh, describe what what this means now you have for these two figures you have <clears throat> a variation in the uh, applied gate voltage okay and I remember I put the drain voltage at one volt, I guess. Yes, I put it at one volt. So and and we vary the the, the gate voltage. And what you see here is something that you don't see in, in many of the of the already existing code. I mean, you have always the current or the same thing, which is very simple to do. In this code, I try to make other calculations, which I guess uh, will be more useful or will be uh, of more significance to, to, to students. Uh, and it's not easy to do in MATLAB. Okay, so this one here connects the the uh, psi s, which is the uh, potential at the surface under the uh, oxide. You know, of course, uh, in the structure of MOSFET, you have the gate uh, voltage is applied to the uh, silicon dioxide or the insulator part, and under that you have the uh, channel. So what we calculate here is the potential exactly underneath the oxide just 
at the surface of the channel okay which is which we call the potential at the, uh, at the surface the surface potential okay and here you got this line this is a very important line this line is, is two of uh, psi bulk which is a potential in the in the bulk of the channel and whenever the psi s become higher than uh, the psi bulk it becomes uh, what we know in the inversion region okay the device becomes in the inversion region. so you can see that uh, when V gate is negative, you have psi s of course negative. Then when V gate is zero, psi s is also zero, and it gets higher as the V gate gets higher. And here, this is an important point because at this point, the device uh, become uh, to the inversion. It become uh, in the inversion region of operation because it became higher, or actually equal exactly to uh, twice the uh, potential in the bulk. Okay. We can see that this happens almost at one point. Let's let's see exactly when this happens. Okay. So yeah, it's around 1.5 uh, five volts for this device. Now here you can see the uh, capacitance, right? The gate capacitance in terms of the oxide capacitance. Okay. You have the oxide capacitance and you have the overall gate capacitance in the terms of the oxide capacitance. So when when you have a very uh, negative or very positive uh, uh, v gate you can see that the uh, gate capacitance is equal to the oxide capacitance they are one the ratio between them are one so here you have a total uh, the whole capacitance okay which is, which is equal to the oxide capacitance which is the maximum and then uh, as you get closer to the point of inversion uh, you get you get a drop in this capacitance, right? This is because of the accumulation of the charges. So, uh, so as you can see, the, the the minimum point of capacitance, a point of inversion, okay, and then it shifts up again. So, this is very important uh, to calculate and see. And you can, what you see here is the capacitance at the flat band. So you can see they are equal, which is expected, of course. That the flat band is equal to the gate capacitance, okay, uh, at a gate voltage of zero, okay. Then here you can see that as a function of the psi s, which is a surface potential, you can see the accumulated charge, okay, in numbers. They are in terms of number. I, I divided this by Q, which is the, uh, the unit of charge, of course, of electron, to to uh, express it in number of, of particles accumulated. So we can see that uh, it, you have a high number of accumulated with negative, then at zero you have the minimum number of accumulated charge, and then at, at, at psi s going high again, you can have a more accumulation of uh, charge. And I took the absolute actually, so uh, you can see only the uh, number of accumulated charge, not the uh, uh, Okay, now this one is very important. This one, uh, actually varies the channel length okay um, and you will not find this in many uh, codes because it, it uses some experimental data and uh, it's not easy to get this data but I have them from this experimental data for this device you know exactly after experiments uh, how the threshold voltage is affected by the channel length okay and what you see here is that this black line that is the long channel model that uh, which means that you don't take into effect the the double or the uh, when you apply uh, uh, the drain voltage it doesn't affect the uh, gate voltage because it is long enough i guess you're familiar with this and of course you can uh, look on the on the uh, web or google you will get tons of uh, references for this so it should be uh, constant and yes the ideal longer channel model is a constant value Okay, here you can see it's around 1.3, uh, I don't know, three, I guess. Okay. So it is constant, and this red one is the short channel model, okay, which is an approximation uh, uh, of the calculations to make a compact uh, model. You will find it inside the code. If I highlight it, with, it is a compact model of the short channel. And as you can see, that the change of the channel length. You can see that the red, which, which is the short channel model, goes uh, 
better with experimental data than the ideal longer channel and we all agree as the channel length get longer and longer so as you get bigger actually inside as you get bigger in the technology node you will find that the three models of course experimental is the real deal and you have the uh, the longer channel and short channel they all uh, uh, agree to the same value of the threshold voltage but at the long, uh, at the short channels, I'm sorry, which means when you go uh, smaller in, in technology and smaller in size, you will find that the the experimental data, uh, which is the real deal, uh, uh, suggested that there is a drop in the threshold voltage because uh, due to the double effect and, and, and the hot electron effect and so on. So as the channel lens gets smaller, you should see a drop in the which does not happen in the longer channel model so you have to use the short channel model which which works better of course and works well with the uh, experiment and you will find all this uh, in the code uh, i hope you like this video and i hope you subscribe to my channel and you can get the code and all the files in the description Ch uh, thank you for watching